Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Eco-Worthy 100 amp hour rack battery. This is lithium iron phosphate chemistry. It's a 48 volt battery, which means you're somewhere around 5.1 kilowatt hours of storage. This has a 100 amp charge and discharge capability. It also has all the basic safety parameters as well, under and over voltage protection, under temperature protection, over temperature protection, and as far as I know, this is a JBD BMS inside this battery. And I know that because this battery has Bluetooth and the app that they recommend to connect to it only works with JBD BMSs. And I'll show that app on the screen here. And I actually don't recommend that. I recommend using the Overkill Solar app. That is the easiest one to connect to JBD BMSs. And you can still adjust all the parameters and check everything. It's much easier. I used that other app in the past and you actually had to pay to adjust certain parameters, but yeah, you don't have to do anything with the Overkill Solar app. You can use that directly. So I'll show you guys that app in a minute. In the meantime though, I'm gonna pop this battery apart. Uh, I guess I'll show you the front first so you guys can see everything on the front of the battery. Then I'll pop it apart. We'll see what it looks like inside because at the price point this battery is at, it is just hard to believe. I think at the time of making this video, it's like 880 or something dollars, something like that. I can put it on the screen, but yeah, it is really low. And that's on Amazon as well. So you can get this for in the 800 something dollar range with free shipping, which is pretty crazy. I know that's one reason why people have been getting four 12 volt batteries. I've talked to quite a few people that have been doing that and putting them in series because you can still get 12 volt batteries pretty cheap and putting them in series, you could get them around the price point of what this battery right here is. Maybe a little lower still, but probably not with the features. So we'll see, when we pop this apart, we'll take a look quality wise. And then, but this also does have communication as well. And I'm not sure what protocol it uses. We'll take a look. It's probably using Pylon Tech, which would mean it could communicate with the 6000 XP behind me here. If you can get something at that price point that can communicate with the 6000 XP, I know a lot of people are gonna be interested in that. All right, so let's take a look at the front and then get started on tearing it down. All right, so we're at the front here. Let's take a look. This is another thing that stands out is that they have a breaker in this and a lot of the less expensive rack batteries don't have an integrated breaker. Over here, we have the BMS power on and off dip switches, dry contacts, which some batteries are not including anymore, but those are in this one. RS-485, let me pan over here. RS-485 does have CAN protocol as well, RS-232. And this is for battery communication between the batteries. So EcoWorthy has opted to go with these type of terminals on this battery, which is pretty interesting. They send two gauge cable, with this, which uh, I like. Really, you only need four gauge cable, uh, but obviously these cables are just to connect to a bus bar. They also sell a uh, cabinet too that you can get. But yeah, these are just made to connect to the bus bars in the cabinet, so that's what comes with it. But with these terminals, technically you could hook a much larger gauge cable. So I actually kind of like this. The one thing is they're not quite as clean as some of the other terminals you can get on other rack batteries. But yeah, these would allow people with smaller systems that wanted to hook larger gauge cables directly to an inverter. They could use these terminals and you, you could even put a 4 out there. It wouldn't be a problem. And then so these terminals aren't exposed. They send these little covers right here. Not very classy. <laughs> those aren't very classy looking there, but those will cover the terminals. So I would say, I mean, other than the fact that they're not quite a matching color. I mean, they'll work, right? And these are just 3D printed little uh, covers to go over the terminals. But yeah, that's probably a little, aesthetically anyway, it's a bit of a weak point, but not bad. Definitely not a deal breaker for somebody that's considering this. Now on the far right, you guys can see all the way over here, they have a little ground terminal and they send a grounding wire as well as the little bolts to connect to these terminals. And there's a small communication cable that comes with it to parallel between batteries. Before I tear it down, I just wanted to mention these handles are actually pretty nice. So I've seen all kinds of different styles. My favorite are the handles that will fold down or you can just take them off, but this would be my second favorite. These things are very sturdy. I've dealt with some in the past that are twisted all up because they're so flimsy. And the packaging that they had for these, there was a rigid piece of foam over these. 
So it's actually one of the pa best packaging jobs I've seen on a rack battery. So they did a good job with that. Bottom of the lid has some protective shielding on it. Check that out, they have the BMS on the side. This is a first, I've never seen anything like this. I almost feel like I should rotate it. Look at everything over here. This is really cool. Like I, they must have just been trying to fit into the specific form factor of a rack battery because what they've designed here is actually much smaller. You've got a lot of room here. The BMS is mounted on its own mounting plate out here in space. They do have the cells compressed with these two metal plates. They're drawn in and bolted down. So the main negative coming from the main battery terminal over to the BMS and then over to the bus bar, they are two eight gauge cables and those are 200 degrees Celsius. And the main positive is five gauge cable, 200 degrees Celsius. I actually would have preferred to have seen four gauge right there because they send two gauge to, to attach to the bus bars from this battery. But if the internal cabling, if the internal conductors are that much smaller, I mean, what's the point in sending two gauge cable? So like I said, most of the time in most of the builds, you're gonna see a four gauge cable at a minimum on your main positive. Now, if you were to look up the amp rating for five gauge cable at 200 degrees Celsius, it can probably take this current. It would just be nicer. I mean, you're talking about a couple small pieces of conductor from here to there. To upgrade it to, to four gauge or a little bit bigger even would be nicer in my opinion. Especially because like I said, this is what they're sending to go to the bus bar on the outside of the cabinet. So you have to stay consistent in my opinion. They did a great job with protecting the wires though. Everything has protective sheathing. All the main wires are protected the entire way through, which is great. And the wire leads as well, they're all wrapped. And it looks like there's three different temperature sensors. We've got one right here, one over here, one all the way on the far end over there. Actually, I wonder if this is another one right here, glued to the face. It's hard to make out, I know, because it's all black, but there's another one right there. So I wonder if it has four temperature sensors? I'll have to take a look at the app, maybe it'll show that. And these labels right here, that is the Bluetooth number. That's actually on the lid of the battery as well. And then there's scan to download app right here. It's funny they would put these inside, but I guess that's for whoever is putting this together. I would like to see who makes the cells. I'm thinking these might be Eve cells, but the terminals look a little different to me. So I'm gonna see if I can pop this bar off and clip these. See if we can take a look and see who makes the cells, the manufacturer. All right, I've got one visible here. So I'm gonna scan that, see what I come up with. All right, well, I got it. It looks like REPT. I've never heard of that manufacturer. But yeah, at least we, now we know who makes it. And I actually looked at their website afterwards, browsed around a little bit. Before I button it up, I just wanted to take a look. So I turned this on and then I checked the app and I can show you guys a screen recording, but it's got six temperature sensors. So it's almost like a Where's Waldo thing. <laughs> I think there's another here. So that's one, two, three, four. I know we've got five on the front. So there may be one down in the bottom of the case also. That's pretty cool. So six temperature sensors on this pack. Also, another thing I noticed, this is sort of interesting. In the other rack batteries that have a power switch and the breaker, this turns the BMS on and then you can turn this on to turn the output of the rack battery on. But let's watch, I'll show you. So see, that kills the power. And same thing, if you just turn the breaker on, again, the BMS does not turn on. So the BMS requires both power and breaker. That's a little odd to me. I know most of the other rack batteries though have pre-charged resistors in them. So turning the BMS on would activate the resistor 
to charge up the capacitors in the inverter. I did not see one in this battery, so I'm not sure whether or not they have it. It may be integrated into the BMS, but I didn't see it. So either way, that's a little odd to me where you have to have both on for the BMS to turn on. Oh, by the way, that's the code. I didn't mention that before, but that's the code for the Bluetooth right there. All right, I'm gonna button this up. Guys, to be honest, I did not expect it to look this clean. I tried to see anything of value on the BMS right there, but it was all in Chinese, so no specific numbers on the BMS or anything that would mean anything to me. Again, I know it is a JBD BMS, but that's all I know about it. But yeah, guys, build quality wise, not bad. Uh, like I mentioned, there's nothing, there's no pinch points or anything rubbing against any particular areas. So they did a good job covering all the wires. It's clean. So I'm gonna charge this thing up fast with the charge verter. And then I think I'll use the 12,000 XP to do a discharge test on it. And I'll hook a shunt up to it. All right, I've got my charge verter set for 100 amps on the current. So we should be good. Turn the battery on and we'll start charging. So I'm gonna use the 12,000 XP to do the capacity test. It's gonna be easiest for me because it's already hooked to a load center and uh, I don't have to transfer stuff around. So I already unhooked the communications from it. I've got a shunt down here. I'm actually gonna be putting this shunt on the wall, I think, because this is the second time I've done a capacity test with this system. And it makes it easy because I run the battery straight through these bus bars. It goes through the, ba the bus bars in the pro battery when they're all off and then straight to the system. So yeah, I'll probably end up mounting the shunt over here. But in the meantime, I'm going to see if the communication will work right away with the 12,000 XP or if I need to change some of the lithium settings so it can work with the protocol on this eco-worthy battery. So I hooked the communication cable that came with 12,000 XP, so it's just a CAT6 cable. And then I'm gonna put it right here on the battery communication port. And then we'll turn the inverter on and see what happens. All right, so it's working right away. Didn't have to change anything at all. So I didn't have to change any protocols on the inverter or anything. So I just hooked into the CAN port on the battery and straight into the battery communication here. So it worked right away. That's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, it should be simple. Okay, well, that was extremely simple. Everything is up and running, and I've got the battery discharging now right at a 0.2 C rate. So I've got a heater and a heat lamp on it, which I don't mind because I'm cold anyway. <laughs> so uh, we'll check back here in around five hours or so. All right, so it did pass the capacity test, but only just. I've actually charged it most of the way back up already. But let me show you here. So it, the first capacity test I did, it ended up at 88 amp hours. So we were 12 amp hours shy of the stated capacity of the battery. So then I went back in and charged everything back up and did a discharge again. But this time I came out when it was close to the end and I saw cell number one was really dipping first before all the other cells. And I believe that's what was making the under voltage protection kick in. And yeah, the, it, it's probably just a little bit of a balance issue. So it's hard to say because I've never dealt with these particular cells before. So it may end up remedying itself as you charge and discharge it and everything might balance out a little better as it top balances. But as it is right now, so it did improve the next capacity test ended up being right at 96 amp hours. And then when I lowered the amperage um, of the draw, I ended up getting right at 100 amps before we had a low voltage disconnect. It didn't necessarily pass in the traditional way that I've done other capacity tests at a 0.2 C rate all the way through. I ended up having to lower the amperage draw just a little bit to get that last, to eke that last bit of power out of the battery. So it could be if I cycled it two or three more times all the way up to 57 volts or so, and then went back down with it, I would probably get that last bit of amp hours out of it. Because like I said, we had a 10 amp hour improvement from the first to the second test. 
Also, I forgot to show you guys the mobile app uh, showing the capacity of this battery here. So we should be in the 80% range, I think I saw just a minute ago. So yeah, 81%. So it should say the same thing on the mobile app. All right, I don't typically do a maximum output test for the battery, but since I've got everything hooked up, I'll check and see how much current this battery can handle before it trips. All right, so I would expect the overcurrent protection to kick in right at 105 amps or so. That is typically what we'll see with these rack batteries, although one of them I tested, the MK Energy battery, was good for 120 amps without a problem. But we'll see. This is rated for 100 amps, so let's see how far we can get it. There we go. And actually, while I was doing the review, I checked out that app I mentioned in the beginning. And it's not that bad, actually. It's been probably close to two years since I looked at it last. And they've updated it quite a bit. So you guys might want to check that out also. I should point this out because I know people are going to ask. But the Eco-Worthy battery is not going to be compatible with EG4 batteries. Whether that's the Pro batteries, the Rack batteries, like the Life Power Force. They will not be able to communicate with each other. It doesn't mean you're not going to be able to use these batteries with another type. But yeah, you will not have communication between the two. You have different protocols, different BMSs, everything. All right, guys. So to finish up here, I'll repeat one of the things I said towards the beginning is I really can't believe the price point this battery is at. And one of the things you had to sacrifice in the past if you wanted a really cheap battery was often build quality. And another was communication. But this battery has RS-45 and CAN communication. And it didn't have an issue communicating with the 12,000 XP. And a lot of the newer inverters are capable of communicating via pylon tech, and that is something this battery uses. So most of the newer EG4 inverters, uh, Solark is another one, but you may not be able to communicate with some versions of GrowWatt inverters, some Voltronic, so it really depends on the inverter. But yeah, I think the majority you're going to be able to communicate with with this battery. And if you're interested in it, you could probably always contact EcoWorthy and make sure your make and model will communicate with it. I do like the fact that it has Bluetooth though, especially for those people that are only gonna be getting one or two batteries for a small system. That's actually gonna be helpful for them. So there is some things you aren't gonna get in this battery that you would in a more expensive brand like an EG4. So I didn't see a pre-charge resistor in it like I mentioned before, and I can put that down below. I emailed them, so I'll put the answer down below to whatever they respond. While I'm editing this video, hopefully they'll respond and I'll be able to put something. Although I watch videos and basically every week I still see people that do not utilize the pre-charge resistors even if they have them on their batteries. They basically just flip that breaker and hope for the best. <laughs> Next would be fire arresters and a lot of the higher end batteries are utilizing them now. Next would be rapid shutdown. Most of the EG4 batteries have that integrated into them now, so with the push of a button, you can shut down all the batteries together. And that's actually starting to spread to other battery brands as well. This is not gonna have rapid shutdown capability. But those things I mentioned before may not be a deal breaker for a lot of people. They just want storage. This does have a 10 year warranty though, which surprised me. And EcoWorthy is not a brand new company. They actually have a lot of stuff on the market. And I looked up some reviews on their warranty process and it seemed like Overall, people had a pretty good experience with it. But I think most of your tech support is gonna be via email. So if that is an issue for people, then they may wanna go a different route. So yeah, if you guys have already bought one of these or you bought something else from EcoWorthy, let me know. And I'll put a link in the description below to this battery. I'll put a link to EcoWorthy's website and an Amazon link for this as well. The price I put on the screen in the beginning is the cheapest I've seen. I did see another guy post something that he had got them for like 750 bucks a piece, but it may have been some kind of bulk deal or something like that. And hopefully the price I put up there stays that way for a while and it wasn't just some type of brief promotional. I would hate to release the video and then it jumps up 400 bucks on everyone. So that's about it guys. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. Hey guys, so. Okay, here we go. And a lot of the newer vert. So yeah guys, I hope this video, 